Atlantis, negative return. Negative return. That call from Capcom Barry Wilmore indicating that we're too high in altitude, too far downrange to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Right However, Atlantis' like three engines performing <laughs> perfectly. Wow. Four minutes, what? 20 seconds into the flight. Listening in as well, and astronaut Katie Coleman is with us. Uh, Katie, in terms of what's happening now, what's going on? Well, they've already uh, gotten rid of the solid rocket boosters. We used up all the fuel, toss them off. Looks like they fall down, but they actually go up another 150,000 feet. Is that right? Because they're still on their way. Now, those things actually will land in the ocean vertically, really? get picked up, cleaned out. Could be used again, but in this case, not necessary. I'm sure Last they'll pick time. them up to clean them out, though. And uh, now we're just waiting for main engine cutoff, which is going to be eight and a half minutes after launch. And that means we've, you know, they've achieved orbit and they're on their way to space. I mean, I, you, you guys have seen this a lot. Uh, this is the first time I've actually been here for it. It is completely different. It is such a cool experience. The power of it, I mean, we are... How many miles away are we? About five. Five, well, miles, five miles away. Miles, yeah. The sound is, it, it, you uh, feel is it. definite. Yeah, you feel it like go through you. And the light is so bright uh, from the, the, the boosters that you can barely look at it. I mean, it's it's such a searing, searing heat. The television has never done it justice. I mean, that's clear. Yeah. I try. But, you know, I, I just try to tell people that it's just, it's like nothing you've ever seen. And, and I try to tell people that it's it's a big deal for people to leave the planet. Right. Even though it's gotten to be every day. I mean, that's what the space shuttle has given us is people go to space. But You really do feel that they are leaving the planet. I mean, you feel that yes. they're kind of like ripping a hole in the sky exactly it's uh, it's extraordinary they're, they're they're traveling now over seven thousand miles an hour already five and a half minutes into the flight incredible yeah just incredible um, okay. and, and i mean to see that that column of of i it's just incredible it's really rather remarkable and it's different every time you say because you know it depends on the wind which way the wind is going right. the light the time of day you know how long you can see the shuttle it's always you know so every launch picture is going to be different and i think you'll look at everyone a little differently now the closest sound i can think of is and it's nothing it's not, it's like a pale comparison to it is when you know you hear a, a jet like breaking the sound barrier you know you hear the boom of a jet overhead but i mean that's it's nothing compared to this this is uh, I don't know how to describe it. You really just it. feel it through your whole body. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Carol Costello uh, is with uh, spectators on the beach. Um, Carol, from, from your perspective, uh, I mean, that, that sound, which doesn't hit, it takes a while for that sound to actually reach. What, I'm sorry, Katie, what are we looking oh, at? I'm just looking at, uh, your, you can actually see the main, main engine tank. Um, we're about to separate in a couple minutes, but you see the, the edge of the earth there. So now you see how high they are because you don't just see whole earth behind them, you see the edge of the earth. To have gone that high that quickly is just extraordinary. I mean, we're all sort of still sitting here. It happened just seconds ago, and they're already... Look at now, you can even just make out things on the Earth. Yeah, they're going to be in space in, like, a minute, minute and a half. And you can, I mean, are you looking out the window this when I mean, are these astronauts at this point even looking out the window, or do they have so many things going on that they're not paying attention? I'd say most of them have things going on, but, um, but if there's nothing going wrong, which on this flight we haven't seen anything go wrong, the mission specialists in the back can actually use the mirrors on their kneeboards to look out the overhead windows. And you can see the, the blue sky just change to the black of space. Any clouds just get shrink like little like cartoon things, just mm. really small. Right in about one minute from now is when they'll have main engine cut off and then they'll separate the giant external tank. At that point, you're in space, right? Absolutely. One minute. I mean, they're actually already in space, 50 miles, right. and you're in space. But that's the end of the powered flight, and, and that means we're going to get rid of the big fuel tank, don't need it anymore. And that's why you'll see the, the fuel tanks on the bottom there. You'll actually see that separate. The, the shuttle will fly away and then do a pitch maneuver so we can take photographs of that tank mm -hmm. and diagnose whether any pieces of the foam on the tank might have come off um, it, you know, and, and it cause damage. It doesn't look like it, but... Yeah, I just heard him say, you're traveling about 15,000 miles an hour right now. Exactly. And when you hit Miko, main engine cutoff, you're at 17, over 17,000 miles an hour. It looks like you're standing still. And I think this view that you have right now, I mean, is that you can see the Earth actually getting smaller. Mm. I mean, the Earth was big. We were right, they were right on the Earth, and now it's getting smaller and smaller. And how long will it take to actually get to the International Space Station? You could get there quickly, but the most the fuel efficient way it'll take about two days to, to Sunday catch up. morning is uh, the scheduled docking. Yep. All right, main engine cutoff has been confirmed. So now we're going to see. You can see it now. We're just watching the uh, separation. Any and this second. is loud on board. This is really loud. That's what I've heard. Explosive. Yeah. There's explosive charges, charges that do the separation. So what is actually happening? Now standing by for external the, tank the, the tank is now the shuttle is going to actually fly away from the tank there. So the tank stays in there one place, now. and now see? the shuttle is going, and the camera is on the tank. So mm -hmm. we see the shuttle 
gracefully arcing away. Atlantis off the tank. Commander Chris Ferguson will be maneuvering Atlantis now into an orientation to enable Sandy Magnus so to capture digital still so a imagery. Couple chances of the to look at the shuttle. So at this point, then, how does the shuttle maneuver? It's got uh, jets that use fuel that when the two kinds of fuel actually combine, they make a gas and that, that um, gives them propulsion. It's like a, a jet pack. But we've got them all over the shuttle so that we can maneuver it. So now you're so seeing can a view from So it can move in all different directions. Exactly. Uh -huh. So they're actually maneuvering the shuttle so that they can then turn around and look at the tank. And Sandy will be snapping picture after picture in detail up and down the tank. That's one way to sort of investigate how did Ascent go in terms of debris, mm -hmm. is to look at how did the tank fare. And then when the shuttle approaches the space station, the shuttle will sort of do a, 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 a belly flip in front of the space station. The station astronauts will photograph it. Extraordinary. Just incredible. As we continue to watch these images, let's also check in with Carol Costello, who's on the uh, the beach with uh, spectators. Uh, Carol, from this vantage point, it was extraordinary. I imagine uh, similar reaction there. Exciting reaction. Then, as the space shuttle sh took off, people, there were chants of "USA, USA," and a giant cheer went up from the crowd. These folks have stuck around to talk with us and. Uh, you tried eight times to see the shuttle. You finally did. What went through your mind? <laughs> I was just happy that it finally got to the point where I can get it off my bucket list. That last couple of seconds where they stopped for a camera, a camera <laughs> of all things to keep me from not seeing it. So I'm glad I don't have to come for a knife try. So I'm happy to see it go off. So, so as you saw the shuttle lifting off, I mean, was it pride and country that went through your mind? Was it just excitement? What was it? Uh, it was a little bit of everything. Um, I'm glad to see that, you know, I got to be a part of history, you know, the beginning and the end because there's something new that's coming after this. And I got to be here with all these people here and, and wonderful Americans to experience that. I know. I, somebody came. Oh, it was a lot of cheers for that. Thank you very much. Kind of dumb. Licensed place from 26 states. Met a man from Australia, New Zealand. And there was another one from S Scotland, right? Yeah, it's been amazing. Okay, Matthew, you were sleeping because you got here very early this morning. You were awake for the launch, thank goodness. So when you saw it, what adjective described it best? Awesome. <laughs> I knew that word was coming to mind. Are you glad to be part of history? Yes. And um, do you have, did you ever have dreams of becoming an astronaut? Yes. And do you think that it will still be possible even though this is the last shuttle launch? Yep. You do. And I'll ask your mom that very question because this was exciting for you too. Oh, yeah, awesome. um, there are some people who think that, that this is the end of the space program. Even though there are other programs on tap, it will be quite some time, maybe not within his lifetime, that we'll see someone on board something like a space shuttle. What do you think? I just hope that they continue to go farther into space and keep going and maybe one day he will get to be part of it or maybe his kids. Do you think it's, it's it was correct of the president to, to tell NASA to go into a different direction? Yes, he was. I think because I think we should go to the moon and to Mars and visit other planets and see stuff. So although this is kind of a sad day because it's the last, you know, shuttle that's that's gone up, that's okay by you. It wasn't sad. It was a good good ending to a great vacation here in Florida. <laughs> That's awesome. See, there are still hopeful Americans out there, Anderson. Um, but I got to tell you, when we saw the bright lights of the shuttle taking off and the chance of USA, USA began, it was hard not, not to cry, frankly. <laughs> Well, just the uh, so many extraordinary different emotions, I mean, uh, to, to witness it in person. So much different than seeing it on TV, but we're glad that uh, the launch happened and that folks around the world were able to watch it uh, on, on our covers. I'm here uh, still with uh, Katie Coleman and, and CNN and Sean Zarella. Um, I sound like an idiot because all I, I all while, while Carol was talking to people, all I kept saying to you was like, wow. It was, I mean, I still can't get over just the power of that machine uh, and the technology required to, to make this happen. It's an emotional thing. I cry probably at almost every one that I see in person mm -hmm. because there's just, it's so clear how much power there is. And, and there's people in there. And in my case, I, I know them. And, and you know they're doing something that they think is really important. You brought your son with you here today. Why did you want him to, to be here and see it? Well, I wanted him to see a launch um, when I wasn't on the rocket. I wanted, to, I wanted him to do, to do that together so that we'd get to, you know, kind of talk about what launch mm -hmm. feels like, you know, to watch it. Because for me to watch a launch is actually, I'm pretty nervous watching and I wonder what it was like for him. It's got to be amazing to hear kids, as we heard earlier, um, uh, I think Carol interviewing, uh, or Brooke interviewing a little boy who was saying he wants to be an astronaut. It's got to be kind of an amazing feeling when you hear somebody say that. 
Well, because they think it's just like one more, I mean, they could be this, they could be that, they could be an astronaut, they, they just think it's normal. Mm -hmm. And I think that means that we've achieved a lot of our goals. They think going to space is normal. And the shuttle really has, has done that. I mean, it has, it, it's a workhorse, it has, you know, been, been the site of so many firsts, the first woman in space, the first African-American in space, African-American woman. Yeah, and I mean, I, you know, it, we call it iconic, and it really is. I mean, it's right up there with the Coca-Cola symbol and the CNN symbol. I mean, really, the shuttle is the shuttle around the world. Everybody knows what the shuttle is. It's not mistaken for anything else. And, and people believe that it's possible for us to leave the planet, live in space, go to other places, and, and I think that that means we've achieved a big goal and the fact that the shuttle has built the space station. Mm -hmm. I mean, not alone, but certainly a large part of it. Large pieces of the space station come up in the shuttle, dock to the station, robotic arm reaches out, takes that next big module, attaches it. And now, I mean, I just came back from there and it's huge and it's capable. It has power, data, all those things that we need to do things we just can't do down here. Well, there won't be any more uh, shuttle missions like this, but there will be other missions. We'll talk about what's ahead in a moment. Let's want to as we go to break, I want to show you the launch uh, once again because, frankly, there's nothing like it. Let's, let's take a look. How are you? Good to see you. Hey, how are you? I'm Anderson. Thank <laughs> you. 